ಹಾಗಾದ್ರೆ can think of a thousand of reasons why not <laughs> first you got to talk to me for like more than 10 minutes all right so right off the bat check out my hat yeah i like that it's nice aml nation aml nation can only see the bottom half of your head yeah exactly bonus <laughs> all right i'm gonna take a picture of us for okay. the whole for the whole world to see because that's just the kind of guy I am. And this time I'm going to remember to look at the camera instead of over here because I have a screen. All right. So where should I look? The screen? You should look at the screen because we can see you. Okay. I'm looking right at the webcam. Well, let's give everybody a big thumbs up. Geez, I'm ugly. <laughs> I am like easily. I am easily like uh, like one of the. Uh, the uh, I'm dusty. I always wanted to be. I always wanted to be dapper like a uh, hard part. Uh, oh. being dapper is overrated. Is it? Yeah. Where would you Where would you put yourself? So if there's a If there's a scale between dusty and dapper, and it's one to ten, I put my and ten is dapper and one is dusty or zero is even dustier. I put myself at about two. I'm more of a five. Okay. I'm 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 actually I'm I'm most comfortable on the the dusty side of the scale. Right. But I can go dapper if I have to like for work or whatever. Like I have no problem putting on the suit and tie or the tux if I have to do a black tie gig or something, but I'm actually most comfortable in a t-shirt, a ball cap and a ripped up pair of jeans. Yeah, see I see I can do a suit and I do a suit really well because the last thing I, I hate when you see guys with the tie over to one side and everything, mm-hmm. or, or the neck that's too big. You see those guys that style where the neck is like two sizes too big and there's a big gap. Right. I don't do any of that. I I uh, when I put on a suit, man, I'm like I'm I'm looking to make trouble, <laughs> <laughs> and so I make sure I do it right. And I don't use the standard. Uh, I use the I don't know what kind of knot it's called, but the skinnier knot, the, not the. Side, but you do it differently, and it looks more long. It's longer than it is the wind standard Windsor knot. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And I prefer a tie bar, but I think that's kind of gone out of style. Oh yeah, I don't know that. I don't know that anybody uses a tie bar these days. Yeah, I know. I like those, and I definitely am a button-down collar guy if I can, because mm-hmm. I hate seeing. You know, I hate having every picture where one collar's like up like this, you know, <laughs> sticking up in the air. Right. So if I'm putting on a suit, man, I'm uh, I'm putting some work into it. The only, That's good. The only problem I've run into in the last several years, maybe as many as twenty, is now I usually like to wear my uh, uh, the same uh, boots I wear for when I ride my motorcycle. Oh yeah. So they're kind of uh, worn out, but they look uh, good. they look good at the bottom of a suit. And I well, you gotta you gotta have good shoes if you're gonna wear a suit. Yeah, I guess so. I have good shoes, but I really like wearing my motorcycle boots. They're old cowboy <laughs> boots that I've broken. There's nothing better than an old pair of cowboy boots that are broken. Mm-hmm. I'm not much of a boot guy, but I love a good pair of broken in sneakers. Oh yeah, you know, just a a good pair of of comfortable well-worn sneakers that you can just slip your feet right into and oh yeah you know oh the first year i did my walk i wore (laughs) i have uh reebok all leather sneakers which is was my standard go-to sneaker and barb says to me you're not wearing those are you and i said yeah i said i wear these all the time they're comfortable she's like they're too heavy and i'm like no, they'll be fine i'm like i wear these been wearing these for 25 years these are the kind of sneakers i wear and uh, she was in exactly right. By the time I, I mm-hmm. think I chewed through like eight different pairs of shoes the first year. <laughs> I went through, but I had about eight cat, eight blisters, and they were like too heavy. 
So I ended up with sandals and everything else. Well, Bruce Kelly knows all about that because he did the last day with me. Yep. And uh, they they were practically carrying me the last couple of miles because I kept. So then we went up this road that was paved and I was wearing just sandals. But then we turned onto a road that was busier where we had to walk on the shoulder for like two miles. Oh, yeah. Sandals won't work for that. No, that was a disaster. (laughs) And then uh, the second year, I had realized that I wasn't starting out with those shoes. And I went to a better uh, shoe, sneaker, soft sneaker. I had Reeboks and all that. And then this year, I found uh, New Balance 880s. Mm -hmm. I think they're the best shoes I've ever owned for walking. Mm -hmm. They're spectacular. It's it's funny the um the the science that is going into shoes now and sneakers is is just phenomenal in terms of you know like when when Deb had her knees done knowing that she was going to be doing physical therapy and and walking and everything she went to um, a shoe place and and told them and they're like oh well if that's what you're going through this is the shoe for you like apparently this this pair of sneakers that she got is like perfect for walking and exercise and you know it's it the it supports your legs and your knees and everything so it was just like you know over engineered that sort of thing yeah. so now these 80 880s by New Balance they don't look like much but whatever it is they've done to them I bet you I've got close to a thousand miles on them now and, wow and they're still just as good as anything so it's a shame. It's a shame. Sneakers don't have like a little odometer. Yeah, know, I know. Built into the built into the sole or something that you can, you know, look at the back of your heel and oh, okay, I just turned ten thousand miles or something. I got a pedometer on my phone, and I think I started using it in May of, I think I started using it in May of two thousand seventeen. Maybe is that when I started using it? Let's see. Let's go to the big board. See what it says. Well, there's some place where it's all time. Where does it say all time? Anyways, yeah, it's May of 2017. But in the last year, in the last 365 days, I've walked 2,794,000 steps. Wow. And I'm That's cool. And I'm and I'm still hefty. <laughs> and you're still going. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing of all time was watching uh, remember that guy Robert Blake Beretta? mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Uh, He was being interviewed on Johnny Carson one night and uh, he somehow they got into how much uh, this uh, Robert Blake would work out because he looked good. And he says, yeah, because I'm a junk food addict. So Mm -hmm. if there's an earthquake, he says, I'm going to the junk food stand and we're going down together. (laughs) So it's a good thing I have where I do walk these miles. So uh, here we are in the middle of it. This is another was happening. So I did. I real. this is unedited, Tom. Okay. So be careful what you say, but you've been pretty careful for the last eight minutes. So that's good. Okay. Um, so this is unedited. I don't do any editing to it. I just stick the front and the end on and, and do the, the only editing I do is the sound quality and boom, I put it out there. Cause I thought, wouldn't it be cool if, it, if I kept talking to people because, and I could put a little something out every day because some, everybody really appreciated that. Let's hug it out. Mm-hmm. Episode. That got a lot of that got a lot of comments, and it was funny. Uh, earlier this week, I was listening to it when I was out in the barn doing some track work, and I just was, I was, I was just laughing. I was there by myself, but I was just laughing my head off on on some of the uh, yeah, some of the stuff. And then what was really funny is, you know, uh, a day or two later, I happened to be looking on CNN for something, and in in one of the the junk ads that pops up at the bottom of the page, it's like, what's the What's the best bidet for you? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. It was like me. Yeah. I, I, I listened to it and I enjoyed the whole thing. And then I got, well, actually, I only listened to it on the same time everybody else did. And I got to the end where, where I said, yeah, I've been driving on grass at 60 miles an hour and then I needed the bidet, <laughs> which is right. about right. So how are you uh, making out with all this? Cra- so last night I talked to Dave Abelis. Mm-hmm. who's with New Jersey Transit System. Today I talked with Adam Pinellas, who's a uh, conductor on the California Zephyr. Now I'm yep. talking to Tom Jacobs, who's building the Reading Cross Line. And uh, how are you making out? Doing okay. Doing okay. Um, I've been working at home now for almost two weeks. Um, I haven't shaved once during that time. 
So I'm starting to look uh, pretty scruffy, but that's okay. I want to see how it turns out at the end of this. Um, but, uh, you know, we're all, we're all hanging in. Um, my daughter's a nurse, so she still has to go to work and, and take care of patients and take care of people. So she's being very careful and, you know, watching all of that. Um, my wife is still, Deb is still home recuperating from her knee surgery. So she's not going to be going to work back to work for probably another month or so anyway. So this works out perfectly for her, you know, she'd be home anyway. Um, and then, uh, my son, Nate, the, the microbiologist is, uh, stuck up in New York city and he's been working out of his apartment for the past week or so, week and a half. Yeah. I would, I feel like I would like to formally apologize to you, but I also feel like, uh, you and I have developed a friendship where it's not necessary. Yeah, I don't I don't know why you would want to apologize to me. Well, in the early days, and I had the same discussion with Dave Averly's because I think for a lot of people, it was hard to grasp the the uh, severity of the situation. Mm-hmm. And I still have some opinions about it, but I'm I'm trying to keep them to myself. But I I uh, feel like I when you and I were trying to have discussions, I was being uh, kind of animated with my opinions, and I feel like in the end. Yeah, if I got a, I like I like to be the kind of guy that I am very opinionated. I am I'm not, I have no problem speaking out my opinions, but I am very like to be proud of the fact that if I'm wrong, I like to admit it because I think that's a a good cute quality. And I think you were uh, spot on, and I was uh, pretty far off the mark about the way the situation was going to go. Um, no, I mean you, I you know, and I. I felt, like I said um, on the "Can We Hug It Out" episode. I mean, we had a good conversation. Uh, you you had a you had a very fair point in in you know specifically what we were talking about, and you know I, I believe me. I mean, you know, we all have have our opinions about this. You know, some of this stuff, and 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 some of the things that we've talked about. You know, you're absolutely right. You know, and and the the problem with something like this is there are no easy answers, right? There, there's yeah. no, you know, you can, you can argue either side of, of any aspect of what's going on now. You know, the, the, the important thing that I've tried to try to remember is, is that, you know, people come first and, and for me at work, you know, that's making sure that, the people that report to me have what they need. They're taken care of. They have the information they need, making sure, you know, my family is safe, making sure that everybody has enough food, enough supplies, and and just trying to be as, as informed and as rational as we can be, you know, not giving in to panic, not flipping out, just yeah. taking, taking things, um, you know, one day at a time, even one hour at a time. I mean, this with, Something like this, you know, the last time we saw something on this scale was a hundred, you know, a hundred plus years ago with the Spanish flu. Even when you had, were, were you alive? Then? Were you alive then? No, oh. no, I was not. Oh, okay, I was not. I'm not like Mel Brooks, the world's <laughs> oldest man. But you know, even even you know, recently when we had like SARS and H1N1 and everything, and and even Zika, you know, it, it wasn't to the to this scale. Right. right. So, you know, this is all new for everybody. I mean, the, the scientists, you know, they've been studying and, and planning and preparing for something like this. So they kind of understand in theory how this goes. But, you know, most people, you know, haven't had the chance to experience something like this live. So we all just got to get through it together. You know, we all just got to be we all just got to be patient. We all just got to, you know, be, be rational and, and use common sense. You know, don't go to the store and buy 20 cases of toilet paper, yeah. you know, yeah. leave, leave some for somebody else, you know, stuff like that. Well, you but gotta, anyway, we, we got to think about each other. Right. That's the problem. And I mean, uh, and you keep, when you think I'm, you think I'm, uh, I'm talking about when we first were talking about Tom stock. But I was talking about a couple of, I, I'm talking about, uh, well, that was an, an interesting discussion too. But I'm talking about uh, 
Uh, when we like were talking with Ralph, Ralph and Bruce and Kelly yeah. and those guys, I felt like I was pretty animated, and mm-hmm. and I still have some definite opinions about certain things. Like I am very, I'm very annoyed that minimum wage workers, kids are 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 feel we feel it's necessary that kids making minimum wage need to be making us takeout food. Like we can't cook our yeah. own hamburgers. Yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily disagree with you on that. Yeah. However, I think uh, I got. I mostly I agree with uh, uh, your whole uh, your whole take on the situation. I feel like you had a much better grasp on it, and I think it's really important. And I have no idea how we could do this, but everybody has an opinion, and really, not everybody should have an opinion because we need to kind of step back and let those who know what's going on. And and in this situation, you know, your job being in the insurance industry, not in. And in health, you have a better grasp of this kind of stuff than I would have. So anyways, I well, mean, that, that plus the fact that I have a son who has a PhD in all this stuff yeah, and, and has, has spent a lot of time educating me and his mother over the past week or two. Yeah. But, yeah. um, you know, and it, it was interesting, um, when little Mike copy, uh, he commented on a post a couple days ago and and he had a really good summation of of everything with you know the the healthcare system and you know the the reason behind flattening the curve and the social distancing and everything he had a really well and again with with him working right in a hospital yeah um you know he's got a a unique vantage point cuz he's you know in a way he's very much on the front line of all this right so he had a, a really good, I, I forget what the post was. It was just a couple of days ago I saw it, but he really had a, a really well done um, summation of, of why this is important and, and why we need to think about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, to your point, I think, you know, everybody has an opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but at the same time, I think we all have an obligation to make sure that, that opinion is somewhat informed yes. right? and, and yes. backed up by, by facts. Yeah. Like, and I, know? yeah, like, and I would be a perfect example of that. I feel like, you know, it's been self-employed my whole life. I've run a business. I feel that I can get through life uh, quite adequately, but I don't think, I think I need to be one of those people that realizes, you know what, my opinion on this particular subject is not valid. And I need to keep my, I, you know, people like me need to try to keep themselves calm and not necessarily express their opinion constantly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's it's all, you know, at the end of the day, just like so much else in AML Nation, we just need to take care of each other. Yeah. Well, that's the right? cool thing and, about this, yeah. You know, and, and sometimes it really comes down to, you know, even if even if you don't agree with someone, just listening. You know, people, yeah. what, what I have found in, you know, a lot of times in, in, my work life, but also in, in my personal life too, is that a lot of times people just want to be heard and they want to, they want to feel like somebody's listened to them. It doesn't matter if somebody agrees or not, but they want to feel like somebody at least took the time to consider whatever it is they're saying, yeah. as opposed to just, you know, blowing them off or whatever. And, and that's, you know, that can even be true in the hobby, right? You know, because yes. there's so many, you know, there's there's so many different opinions on on how to do the different things that we do in the hobby, whether it's wiring, whether it's track work, which which side does this of a curb does the slidey rail go in go on <laughs> inside or outside, you know, glue your track down or spike it down. I mean, you know, everybody everybody has their their preferred method and and, you know, one's not necessarily better or worse than the other in all cases. So. It's all, you know, let's just take care of each other. Hey, if gluing your track down works for you, that's awesome. Yeah. I prefer I prefer to spike mine down. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. The, train, the trains run both ways, so it's all good, right? Yeah. So and, it, and and I'm hoping, you know, and I'm I'm I know I'm going on here. Well, but, going on is um, good. Going on is good. That's why we're doing it. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, I what I'm hoping and and you know, starting to see, you know, like you, you see some of these articles in the news and stuff. Um you know, people are are starting to be a little bit nicer, and and people are starting to to think more of others as we go through this. Like, um, 
you know, I, I read an article today in the local paper about there's a, a sandwich shop owner near the hospital. So he's offered a thing where people that are walking up to buy sandwiches, cause you know, it's just a walk up place, but he's offering people the opportunity. You can pay, um, you know, you can pay eight or nine bucks and you can buy a meal for a healthcare worker, okay. you know, who maybe can't get out of the hospital to get one. So, you know, and you're seeing, you know, people are, are starting to sew face masks, Right. To, for yes. people to use yes. Because I've they're in short supply. Um, or you're seeing, you know, some of the stores are um, they're setting aside hours just for older people to shop to make sure that older at risk people have a means to get the supplies they need. I've been seeing all over on Facebook people posting, hey, you know, if somebody needs something, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to go to the store at such and such a time. Right. Let me know what you need and I'll pick it. I'll try to pick it up and I'll come drop it off at your house. So, you know, I, I'm hopeful that, you know, that that all of this happening and it's affecting everybody. Right. It's kind of a great equalizer, regardless of your political party, your religion, your skin color, whatever. This is this is something that's that's universal in its impact. Yeah. So and, and maybe I'm naive, but I'm I'm hoping that at the end of the day, that when we all come through this as a country, as a society, that we're all a little bit nicer to each other. Yeah, I think that I I, I felt like that ha that the uh, effect of 9-11 lasted a long time. And maybe yep. this will, uh, you know, for me, the one thing I wish that I could tell everybody. And again, I was saying to Dave Abel, he's the other uh, the other night I was saying. I'm trying not to talk about this. I'm trying to get farther away from it, but it seems I keep having <laughs> reasons to talk about it. Uh, yep. uh, when I was diagnosed with stage four cancer, when I look back now, I'm very disappointed in how scared I was. Uh, and I feel like I had every right to be scared, but I feel like I let myself down in that, you know, I really wanted to kind of John Wayne the thing out of there. And I felt like, man, you know, I look back at it now and there were some stretches in there where I was just a ball of goo and I was of no use to anybody. And you're I, a human being. Yeah, I that's, know. That's absolutely that that's absolutely normal and acceptable and understandable. I mean, you can't and, and I get what you're saying about wanting to wanting to aspire to that. But if you can't make it, it it's it's totally OK. And, and I'll tell you a little story. Um, my dad, you know, my dad through his life, heavy smoker, his whole life had, a, you know, had a couple heart attacks through his life. And then, um, uh, a year or so before he died, um, was diagnosed with lung cancer and we went out to visit him. He lived in Johnstown, which is about three hours away from where I live. So we got into the habit of, of visiting, you know, every, every other weekend we'd go out and spend the weekend. Um, and, you know, this was a guy my whole life that was like the rock, right? You know, right, never, yeah. saw him, never saw him shed a tear, you know, tough as nails, you know, ex-Marine, the whole nine yards, you know, your typical, you know, stern, yeah, you know, yeah. father. And, and I remember, you know, he was going through chemo at the time and, you know, it weakened him a little bit and everything. And, um, I just remember we were sitting out in the yard one day and, and he just, you know, I, I, you know, he, he just started crying and I'm like, dad, what, you know, what's going on? He's like, I'm just, you know, I just really, really appreciate how much you, it's just like when, so when you see something like that, you know, it's like, it really kind of hits you. Like this is, you know, somebody that you never expect to see cry or expect to see, you know, in that kind of state. But, you know, th thinking about it later on the drive home, I'm like, well, no shit. He's going through probably the scariest thing he's ever faced. And it's OK. We're all human. Right. So don't. Yeah. But don't knock not, yourself for that. Well, I'm not really. No I, I'm knocking myself. But the end of the story would be or the end of the moral of the story would be, I think, at the end of this, if people could kind of calm down a little bit, some people, some people have done great but I, uh, you know, they're going to be a lot happier with themselves five years out when they realize how well they handled the situation. Like those toilet paper crazy people are going to be awfully disappointed when they look mm -hmm. back and realize what they did. You know, and that's I'm using. So I'm using my example of you know I was always kind of a hard ass and 
hockey yep. playing guy and motorcycle riding guy. And I was just disappointed in myself. And it's like, it hasn't, you know, it's made me a better person. But I think if I have anything to add to the conversation, I would say to people, you know, these toilet paper crazy people or, or taking advantage of people, you're going to be disappointed with yourself when you look back. Yep. And you're going to, and they're going to have to forgive themselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so what's happening on the railroad? Oh, I know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> this is a subject we have to, we have to talk about. And, yet, and uh, this, uh, these was happening podcasts. I don't give anybody any preamble. I just like, like, let's have at it uh, because, okay. I think, because I think, um, if, if anything about the podcast, if it's gotten Benny better in any way, it's that, uh, everybody knows that, uh, you know, I'm sincere and, uh, any subject we talk about, we try to do the best. Everybody seems to try to do their best to give their best, uh, version. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be absolutely crushed if we can't have Tom stock this year. However, um, however, I am too. Yeah. However, I think we're gonna, you know, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Right. But we're we're gonna you know it's uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna do anything silly because that's just the kind of guys we are. Exactly. And, and uh, so I you know I'm thinking oh my goodness gracious this is not looking this is not going our way right now for sure. But uh, well we're we you know we we have time. Yeah. I mean you know we we don't have to take any action now no. right we're we're still far enough out that we can we can flex we can adjust um you know so at at present i'm i what i would call it i guess would be watchful waiting right yeah. keeping an eye on what's developing but at the same time still proceeding as if it's going to happen and you know yeah. When we get closer, you know, right. late, late April, May, even into May. I mean, it all depends on what's going to, it's all, all depends on the, the whole arc of this. Right. Yeah. So That's we not... just, and, and if we don't do it this year and I'm over talking you, I'm sorry, but if we don't do it this year, we'll either reschedule it for later in the year or we'll have Tom stock 21. Yeah. Is this a fair statement? Uh, I agree with everything you just said. Is this a fair statement? If we have to, if it becomes uh, Tom Stock 2020 slash 21, uh, will it not be bigger and better? Um, I would it'll think be so. better. And it, well, it, it, <laughs> it might be. Well, it might be. It, it might be better. Um, <laughs> well, it's gonna be, well, depending, which, on, depending on who the depending on who the new neighbors turn out to be in the house <laughs> next door that's for sale. Um, you well, know, I, I I don't know how much bigger, but it, it might be better. We might fill up those remaining twelve spots because of pent up demand from everybody being quarantined. But who knows? Which leads me into I think the best thing about our friendship is I am the dusty motorcycle riding self employed guy my whole life, and you're the corporate guy. Which I think we're coming to. You're starting to realize <laughs> we're coming to enjoy the 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 differences. So I think right there we can look at you know I say bigger and better, and you go. Um, well, and then, so my next point, my next point would be, is it not going to give me a whole year of down home fun of just absolutely irritating the crap out of you? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'll, I'll need to, uh, I'll need to double up on my blood pressure, blood pressure <laughs> medication from, from June of, of 2020 to June of 21. Yeah, for exactly. sure. <laughs> it's like, a cause it, you know, it's going to, it's going to give people a whole other year to, you know, finance those RVs and, you know, for, you know, planning layout tours and everything. Exactly. And, it gives you me, know, it's it figuring out what museum we're going to and what route the bus is going to take. And, uh, and arguing what about I, what have I done? Arguing about who gets the microphone on the bus. It gives me <laughs> it gives me a chance to still get a hold of the farmer behind you and see if I can get a uh, 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 get that field for a year. <laughs> it's just it's going to be and for me. I apologize right now. Right now on the air, uh, we're recording this actually on I think today is March the twenty sixth. It uh, is. Uh, it is. We'll probably be uh, this will probably be broadcast in about a week because lots of people are talking. And uh, right now, right here at this point, uh, I uh, declare that I think I don't see it. I I think I'm a winner either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a winner. All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but on the plus side, if that did happen, holy mackerel, how much better will the uh, cross line be in another whole yeah. year? 
that's that's actually true. That'll that'll hopefully give me a chance to actually get some scenery down for you. But it's I'll tell you what, actually, now we can kind of shift and talk about more pleasant topics. Um, since I've been working from home for about the past two weeks, um, that's given me roughly three more hours in my day uh, because I don't have to commute to the office. So it's it's freed up some extra time and I've been spending more time out in the barn than I normally have. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been getting out there a couple hours every night, either getting out in the barn or sitting at the workbench, you know, uh, uh, putzing around with uh, some structures and things and um, track work uh, this, this week I've been focused on, um, the, you know, getting some track work done at Beltline Junction, which is where you come out of Reading Yard and you can either go to Allentown or you can go into Newberry Staging. Um, James had worked out the, the track work, um, but I had to put cork down and everything. So was working on getting the cork down and, and laying the track and getting the turnouts installed and, and things like that. So it's really, um, it's really coming along nicely. And if I can get that done, then I can connect the, um, the East Penn main, which goes down to the lower level through Albertus, you know, down the helix and through Mertztown and Albertus and into Allentown staging. I can get that connected and then go over to the other end and connect to the westbound section that goes up to Rutherford. And we will actually be able to run end to end. We're going to build all that first and then we'll build, we'll come back and build Reading Yard right. uh, on top. So we'll at least have a continuous run capability, which will, you know, let us operate a little bit. And I, I still think it's feasible to have that done and running by Tomstock. So, so that you'll have an actual ability for continuous run on a layout that size. Yep. That, which is really going to make it cool. Because, you know, sometimes you're going to be able to just go in there and turn on a train and mm -hmm. kind of zen yourself out as the train works its way around the layout. Well, that was a, yeah, I mean, that was a conscious thought when, when Bob and I did the plan. It, it really, if, if you, if you look at it from like a 10,000 foot view, the, the plan is really like a, just like a really, really big folded dog bone okay where it's, it's just you know we've got loops on either end at rutherford and allentown so um and and what that enables us to do is when you come into allentown or rutherford if you go in let's say you're going in eastbound into allentown you go around the loop and then you go into staging you're pointed you've essentially done a 180 degree turn so you're pointed your engine is pointed westbound so you could take that same train and now bring it out westbound. Right. So so you can I can I'll be able to reuse trains during a session. That'll be cool. So, you know, it's it's basically like your your the the layout the layout essentially could restage itself. Well, that'll be you know? that'll be a huge help actually because yeah. Because restaging can be a pain. I liked it. I didn't mind it, but my layout was only 20 by 30. So mm -hmm. while it was a reasonably large job, I kind of enjoyed. And basically, I had to run all the trains backwards, which gave me a chance to see just how well they ran. Right. You know, so, I mean, you run a you run a 20-car uh, coal train, loaded coal train backwards, you're going to find out in a hurry if you got any. Yeah, that, that's going to test your, tra <laughs> your track work. Yeah, exactly. So are you in uh, James and Val and are, are you guys still working together on it or what? Um, we didn't get together this week. Um, we didn't get together this Sunday. Um, we've been trying to keep an eye on things. Um, you know, we're, um, you know, Val and John, the new guy, they're both um, older. Right. And so they're both at a little bit more uh, risk. I haven't really, unfortunately, I haven't talked to James much. He's been busy with work. I know he was traveling, I guess it was last week or, or the week before. I think he was in Ohio or somewhere. Um, but I haven't, I haven't talked to him much. Um, so we, we didn't get together this week. We're really kind of playing it by ear with, with everything going on. Um, but, uh, you know, where, when we were, 
for that period where we were getting together, you know, almost every week. Yeah. Th- things have kind of gotten to the point where I can actually get out there and, and get things done um, on my own if I have to. You yeah. know, we we built like a lot of the bench work and stuff so I can just come out and, and lay track and, and do the feeders. And so either I mean, I'm going to keep forging ahead regardless, you know, yeah, doing well, what sure. I can. Um, and and try to get it to a point where, you know, if we're able to get together, then, you know, maybe, OK, all we need to do is let's connect up these bus wires, you know, do this, that and the other thing. And boom, it's connected, you know, just trying I'm trying to push things forward in, in like a logical fashion so that when we get back together, we can, you know, make a big jump in a hurry yeah. to, to finish, tie up the loose ends, I guess you'd say. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. I mean, I know I was talking, like I said, I was talking to Dave Abel. He's last night and he was just crushed because he had to can- uh, cancel his ne- next operating session because his, mm-hmm. uh, his mother-in-law is 80 and she just had a operation on uh, cancer operation. So, you know, his wife was concerned. So he just obviously, yeah. He obviously did the right thing without any question yep. and, and was happy to do it. And uh, he certainly realizes his responsibility. So are you are, a it? lot of guys, a lot of guys have been canceling ops. Oh yeah. Around here too. So, I mean, it, it just, it makes sense. Absolutely. You know, it, at the end of the day, I mean, we all love to do this. It's a great hobby, but at the end of the day, it's a hobby. There's more important things going on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a no brainer. It's a total no brainer, which is kind of what I was saying at the start. I think it's hard for everybody. Part of that is it's hard for everybody to get up to speed at the same level of, of concern because people are Mm -hmm. frustrated and all that stuff. I mean, you know, Dave was quite happy to admit that he didn't see the, what was coming. I mean, any more than I did. It's right. And now they're, you know, he's trying to, him and Rich was, was Nisky and, and his buddy Jack, they're all trying to run the New Jersey Transit Company, and I can't even imagine what that's like. Trying to get- he, yeah, uh, I, I saw he posted a picture today from from Newark Penn Station, which I've been in several times, traveling for work. And it's, excuse me, it's usually a, a really busy station, and he posted a picture from rush hour, and it was deserted. I think there was maybe a half dozen people in the picture. Yeah, exactly. It's bizarre. I mean, not, but that's just, you know, you're going to have to, we're all going to, Yeah, it, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. We all have to, we all have to adapt. And, you know, I mean, um, it's funny, Deb and I, uh, we ordered, uh, we ordered a couple new board games. Oh yeah. And, that's and, a good idea. And she's, since she's home and, and, you know, we, you know, she's still home, like I said, so we're, you know, we've got some board games to try out. Um, we like to do jigsaw puzzles together. So we, you know, we clear off the dining room table and, and we'll work on a jigsaw puzzle together. Just, you know, it, it's, you know, you got, you find ways to pass the time and yeah, you just do what you got to do. I'm lucky. I, I stumbled into, I had been doing really good uh, exercising and riding my bicycle in Florida. And then this started and I thought, ah, oh, crap, I was actually making some headway. So then about a day or two in, I thought I should try to walk 10,000 steps every day. And this is my sixth day of doing that. So between doing that and then I kind of stumbled into doing these, uh, you know, kind of semi-daily uh, mm-hmm. podcasts, I pretty much got a full. And then I go to the office. My office, of course, is empty. So I'm I'm isolated there. And I go to my office for an hour a day. I, I got a pretty, uh, this, I'm, I'm hoping this is over soon because I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like those, it's like those guys that are busier after they retire than when they were working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, uh, anyway. but yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling really good about, about the progress on the layout and, um, you know, some of the other stuff I have going on, I'm, I'm working on, uh, I'm finishing up this, this little gas station and, uh, I started work on, uh, some trailers for a trailer park that, uh, is going to be by the tracks between Temple and Fleetwood. What about motivation? Are you, do you have, like, I notice whenever you're not working on the layout and, and and it seems like you're you jump right into doing a structure. Do you, are you? Is it pretty easy for you to go from one thing to the other? Like you're pretty motivated. Excuse yeah, me. it it time it, out. <laughs> that that won't be edited out. And on a regular podcast, that would be long gone. That was me burping. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I've really I've really tried to to get into this habit of doing something every day. You know, if I, if I can't get out to the barn, 
um, you know, then at least if I can spend an hour, you know, or even a half an hour, you know, doing, doing something on, um, you know, something on a structure kit or something that's going to benefit the layout at some point, then I feel like I'm, you know, I'm making progress. So I, I'm really trying to be diligent about doing at least a little something every day. Like last night, I was out there for about an hour and a half, maybe, um, working on this track work. <clears throat> I got the the interlocking about, I would say, between halfway and, and two thirds done. And by that time, it was around 11 o'clock, actually a little bit past 11, and it was getting late. It's like, well, I got to get up tomorrow. And I'm like, you know what? I I had a choice. I could, you know, I could finish this or I could go make sure I'm, I'm getting enough sleep and, and, you know, keeping myself reasonably healthy. So I said, you know what? I'm at a good stopping point. I'm going to stop and I'll come back at it tomorrow. So, yeah. you know, it was okay that I didn't finish it because it's out there waiting for me now. But at least I got that much done. All right. right. And then I and then I came back in here and I spent 10 minutes painting these trailer park parts before I went to bed. Yeah. So I'm going to ask a hard hitting question because I feel like I was really lucky to uh, uh, t that we found each other when we did. And for the podcast's sake, uh, this is a really hard hitting question. There was a okay. this is a, there was a stretch there where I felt you were getting pretty overwhelmed, maybe like a year, mm -hmm. a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And yeah. I and I feel like that that has gone away, and you feel like you're pretty much accepted. Okay, this is a big project, and this is the way it works, and this is <laughs> no. But I mean, oh, you know, it's uh, I, like, now, I, I like your shirt, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, the gray, the gray standard. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. So I mean, I feel like you've you're enjoying it. I, that would be what I'm trying to say. I feel like you're enjoying it more than you did before, maybe. Well. You know, I, I was always enjoying it, but it's it's ebbs and flows, right? You know, if if something, um, you know, obviously if if everything's going right, you know, you're enjoying it more. Um, if you run into problems or you know things don't go as planned, then you know it's it's a setback and it can be frustrating. Like the the helix, the original yeah. piece of crap helix, <laughs> perfect example you know, of, of something that can be really, really frustrating. And it, it, you're, you're right. It, it can kind of knock your motivation back uh, a notch or two, but then, you know, James brought Troy in and they built this fantastic helix and now we're, we're golden. So you, you just gotta, <clears throat> you just gotta power through it, you yeah. know, and, and it's, um, you know, you, you gotta, you got to do what you got to do to get it done. And you're right. It's, it's a big project. And, um, you know, one of the things that I've, um, I'm really anxious for is to get construction done because dust is starting to become a big problem. Oh, okay. You know, construction dust and everything. And I'm probably going to end up getting a, uh, uh, an air filter, uh, an air filter system, like something that somebody would have like in a wood shop, I'm oh. probably going to get one and install that because um, with there, you know, I, I can't tell if it's just dust from construction, which I think it is. And, or if it's just going to, there's always going to be this much dust just because it's a big wooden structure. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and dust is the enemy of model railroading yes. and, and I don't necessarily want to be spending 80% of my time cleaning the layout versus 20% only, you know, running with it and enjoying it. So I'm thinking I might invest in one of those air filters to help keep the dust down. That's a good idea. And because, yeah, I probably, even if it's just, even if it's construction dust, eventually it'll be regular dust, no matter what you do. Right. And a, they're not that expensive. No, no. I mean, I was looking on, on home depot's website last night. They have some that are, you know, several hundred dollars, but which, you know, on its face may seem like a lot, but when you compare that oh, yeah. to the, 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 the total investment I've made over the years, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's a no brainer. Right. It's total no brainer. Well, that's 45 minutes. What are you going to have for dinner tonight? You, you know what? I don't know. Okay. We've been, <laughs> um, it, it's been interesting because we uh we've been eating at home a lot more obviously with with everything going on um so 
Uh, you know, we've been, you know, we, when those, when this all started, <clears throat> you know, we, we did go and, and stock up on non-perishables and things. So we've got a lot of, a lot of soup, a lot of rice, that sort of thing. So I don't know. We'll have to go up and see what, what's going on. Deb did run to the store today to pick up a few things, but, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's for dinner, but we'll figure something out. I think tonight my buddy owns about 20 miles away in the next town up the road. He owns this fabulous Greek restaurant, and uh, it's it's handy when your friend owns a restaurant and the restaurant is actually good. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to be uh, pals, or you know, right. so, because you're like, man, I can't wait to go see, you know, go see, I uh, go to like we probably go there once a week, and probably on average, it's probably closer. I probably go closer than twice a week, uh, but I'd say once a week probably. But the food's always good. You know, so it's kind of like it's fun. So, anyways, he uh, what he's done is he has the takeout thing, but to his credit, mm -hmm. he uh, it was a volunteer thing, and he didn't and he and he didn't let anybody under the age of anybody that was in school wasn't allowed to volunteer. So he's uh, keeping the kitchen open and uh, it's a skeleton staff. But what he does is you you pay ahead of time, and then. You show up, and there's one guy that comes out, and you know, you, you, you say, What's your name? and you say, Strang, and then he comes out and he puts it on a table, and, mm -hmm. then, you, and then he goes back in, and you get out of the car and you pick it up off the table. Yep. Uh, I've heard of other places around here doing something very similar where, you know, they basically like if you call like a, to have a pizza delivered, you know, you pay with a card or whatever over the phone, they come up, drop the pizza off in front of your door, ring the bell, and then they scoot. So, I mean, smart way to do it. Yeah. You know, just mi minimize, minimize that, uh, that, that human contact for the time being. Uh, so I hope this is over soon, but everybody does. So, and we, I feel like we just started. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my son, the PhD, I was talking to him, I guess it was two nights ago. And what he told me is I, I said, you know, what, what's the scoop? And he said, there's, there's no way to predict, but the next two weeks, are going to be so that would be the last week in March and then the first full week in April are are going to be informative to see ultimately how this is going to go. So, you know, I you can take that for for what it's worth. Um so it's really I mean it just I think it just drives home the point that we just have to we just have to wait and see and just take it day by day. Yeah, cuz I hope soon because I'm exhausted with all these. I'm going to end up piled up these things was happening are going to be <laughs> because it's fun because everybody's home and yep. it's easy to do and everybody wants to it gives everybody a break something somebody to chat to and so there you go well i think it you know i think it gives you a chance it gives you a chance to talk to <clears throat> you know other other people that are involved in aml nation that maybe aren't you know quote-unquote regulars you know yeah. like someone like a like a chris adams or a, or a tracy i mean it's it's great to to give them the chance to to spotlight you know what they've got going on and you know what they're i mean chris is just going like gangbusters on his uh, scenery on his layout um i can't wait to uh, get up there next year for springfield and see all the progress yeah um you know and uh you know tracy's great so it's um it's good i i, I like it you know okay uh so we have an email address uh, modeler's life. You want to try the email address? Oh, you're going to put me on the spot. Um, okay. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us through the hip and happening, uh, method of, of email, um, it's modeler's life at gmail.com. That's modelers with one L like love your neighbor, not, Two L's like Kelly. I, I like that. That's a good one. And why couldn't Kelly do that? Like, why, 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 <laughs> why, 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 what's wrong with Kelly? Why can't he do that? Do uh, uh, Kelly has the best laugh on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the guy a break. He's a good guy. He's a great guy. I just said he has the best life, laugh on the planet, and he's a great guy. Kelly is just one of those guys you can't help but like. He's an <laughs> awesome guy. There's nothing like you. No, I'm kidding. Oh, thanks. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm kidding. Uh, and we have a website, modelerslife.com. If you go there, you see all kinds of stuff. 
And, uh, and you see all these was happening things. And finally, yeah. are you ready for the end? Sure. So remember, remember, a Modeler's Life podcast is considered marginally adequate by six out of ten. People patiently waiting for normal to return. For car crushing action Saturday, Saturday, Saturday at the Spectrum Burning Motor Coaches Battle It Out in the Mud Bog with special guest stars Heather Locklear and Knight Rider Car Kit. It's another Lincoln Homer.